Before I start this benchmark video, I wanna announce to you guys that this channel now has 50 subscribers. We are halfway to 100 subscribers. Now, how should I celebrate the milestone? Oh I know. I will test GTA 4. But wait, you already tested this game. Well yeah, I did. And it's actually one of the first videos on this channel. So this is a remake of that video. But why I'm revisiting GTA 4 as a 50 subscribers special? You may be asking, I could have thinked of something else. Well, number 1, I no longer like that video. Number 2, GTA 4's PC port is considered to be the most unoptimized one ever made, so it would be interesting to again see how it runs on the Intel Celeron N2840 and Intel HD graphics bay trail. And number 3, GTA 4 is still loved by many many people. I mean look at those physics. How could you not love an open world game with such an amazing physics engine so ahead of its time? Also let's not forget that certain favorite activity of that certain fatty cousin. Nico, it's Roman. Let's go bowling. Okay, so when I made the old GTA 4 video, I was using the 2020 Complete Edition Steam version. And it's not a great version, because it has little modding compatibility. You can't create a decent command line for it. Hell you can't even lower the game's resolution from 800 by 600 using the width and height arguments on a command line with that version. So instead, I downgraded to version 1.0.4.0, which has amazing modding compatibility, and is also known to run better than other versions. I even created a low-end mod with which we will be working with in this video. Okay, I didn't really create it, this is actually a mix of three mods, and don't you worry, I did give credits to the original creators and the readme file. But first, I will test the game with the stock low settings and only the command line applied, and I even removed the width and height arguments from it, because, if you have followed this channel before, you know I love testing games at native resolution first, before going for lower resolutions. Yeah, it's a PowerPoint presentation at native resolution, as expected, so let's move on. Now it's 800 by 600's turn. So far we are getting around 15 FPS inside, which is still not a good sign. 
What the hell? It runs better outside than inside the safe house. I'm going to start counting the FPS. Let's shut this guy up. Perfect headshot again. And now let's enter our red car. And I actually created my own benchmark route, which I rehearsed two times before filming the recordings. So far, it's not running so badly, mostly staying in the 20s, although it still drops into the 10s as to be expected again. Now let's turn right towards my favorite boulevard in this game. Ouch. Ooh. I hope they got insurance. Also this area is giving quite a lot of trouble to the integrated graphics. Probably because there are quite a lot of trees and we are near a park. Okay that's better, although it will most likely drop as we approach Algonquin. Yeah it's dropping. 13 FPS there. Now, Algonquin is quite CPU intensive, so the FPS will be inevitably just a bit more stuttery here. Basically whether the CPU or the iGPU is the bottleneck will vary depending on where you are on the map at 800 by 600. Here's another park with a shitload of trees, however this time the integrated graphics don't struggle as much as they did in that area near the Bohan Hospital. Interesting. It's epic stunt time. Let's pass the burned down safe house. I'm boarding the ship. Okay, 20 FPS average, better than what you'd expect from trying to run the worst PC port ever released, on a super low end laptop. Okay 19 FPS, but 19 FPS is the same as 20 FPS, right?
Alright, now it's time to put the rest of the low end mod to action and see what it does to the graphics. The resolution has not been changed from 800 by 600 for now, in order to see how much of a performance difference does the mod as a whole make. So far in the safe house we are still getting the same FPS. Now, the first noticeable change that the low end mod does to the visuals is with the trees. You can see that they now look like a bunch of pixelated sprites. Their hitboxes have also been removed, so you can say that they still exist, but at the same time they no longer exist. Let's send this man's whole blah 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 for the third time. Oh shit the police got triggered. I even have two stars, so they are also shooting at me, but we will shake them off. Don't worry. Ouch. Yeah, 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 yeah. We shake them off. In this area, before applying the rest of the mod, it was dropping into the low tents, but now it doesn't. Those physics man. The FPS are still dropping as we approach Algonquin though. And here you can really notice the reduced draw distance. It's epic stunt time part 2 Intel HD graphics boogaloo. Now let's go to the ship. Also why is the ship so demanding for the Intel HD graphics, meanwhile cutscenes, although not shown in the recording, are also quite demanding at 800 by 600 with the FPS dropping to as low as the 1% low, yet when I'm free roaming, the game runs alright, so strange, anyways, almost cinematic 23 FPS average, definitely a noticeable improvement compared to before. Very good. 
So now I applied the 640 by 480 command line, which means that we are now running GTA 4 in that resolution, and when we go outside, the FPS are mostly the same as before, which makes sense since we are now almost entirely CPU bound. However the maximum FPS have definitely improved, look at that, 48 FPS maximum, that's actually insane, let's casually shoot the guy who is a bigger mouth prick than Nico himself, and the police is again after us, but this time we only have one star, so we should be able to evade them even quicker than before. See, look at how quick we shake them off, since at the lower resolution the game becomes entirely CPU bound, expect a bit more frame drops, like this one for example, however inside interiors, in less CPU intensive areas, or during cutscenes, you will see a decent FPS boost. It's Epic Stunt Time Part 3 Seller and Law. Our average FPS increased by only one more from before unfortunately, but hey, the maximum FPS are now super good. The first experiment that I did was running GTA in windowed mode, as one guy claims that doing so gives a load of FPS. So I opened the command line file, and added the windowed parameter to it, and, well, it didn't exactly give more FPS, in fact the game ran almost exactly the same as before, so that was underwhelming. The second experiment that I did, was capping the FPS to 15 using Rivertoner, as one follower commented, if capping the FPS would make Dragon Ball Fighters more playable. Remember that video? In order to do it, just open Rivertoner. Click on add, go to your game folder and click twice on GTA 4.exe, now limit the FPS like that.
and minimize riveting uh, but don't close it, as you can see, the game's FPS are now capped to 15, and while this meant a really flat frame time graph, it still wasn't able to get rid of the small slowdowns that you will occasionally see, because the final 1% low was 10, and that was at 800 by 600 and all of the low end mod applied, and the third and final experiment that I did was, um, 